Let's see whether you have applied the correct principles to this activity. First of all, you would note once again that we have in our table just positive values. As a result, we just work with a positive part of our axis in terms of our numbering lines. With a quantity changing from 0 to 70, on my horizontal axis I show or represent then the quantity values. But remember with a quantity starting at 20 going up to 70, my intervals need to be the same, therefore I start with a quantity of 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, and 70. Similarly, my price range is from 100 to 50. But to construct the graph properly, I need to use intervals of 10 starting at 10. 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, and 100. The vertical axis represents my price. In order to construct the graph, I need a y or price value and a corresponding x or quantity value. Therefore, if the price is 100, then the corresponding quantity is 20. So here at 20 units on the horizontal axis, I draw a line upwards. From 100, I draw a line horizontally or across. And where the two meet, I make a little dot. At 90 and 30, so at 90 I draw once again a horizontal line. From 30 I draw a line upwards. And where the two meet, once again a dot. 80 and 40, from 40 upwards. And there we go. I have my little dot. 70 and 50. Sixty and sixty, from sixty rand across, from sixty units upwards, and where the two meet, I make a dot. And then lastly, fifty and seventy. And now, I have identified the coordinates as reflected by the table. I need to join these dots in order to have a curve. And there you can see the curve that represents the data in the table. But most important is the methodology behind how you construct a graph. And if you apply this methodology, you will never battle with graphs that follow.